Hey everyone, Tino here and welcome to another episode of Dirty Quant. Today I'm gonna to try something a little bit different. Top five reasons to do a PhD. Welcome to my channel. This is the first time here. I usually cover maths, statistics, finance, all good stuff like that. Um, but today, no coding. Um, guess, uh, so try something a little bit different. Just gonna tell you my experience of uh, doing a PhD and sort of top five reasons why I think maybe you should do one. So number one, uh, you will be working on your passion. Uh, it's a cheesy, cheesy, cheesy word. Um, but look, it's it's mainly working in an area that you are interested in, hopefully, you know, hopefully I haven't been coerced into it, but you know, generally speaking, you'll be doing something that you enjoy. Um, and it sort of doesn't really feel like work. Um, you'll, you know, you'll have a supervisor assigned to you and he'll very likely be an expert in that field. And that's really quite awesome. You know, you have something that's doing cutting edge research because usually what you sort of see in, um, in most undergrad or, you know, you know, even in work can actually be sort of quite dated. So you get to see what cutting edge research other people are doing. Look, um, don't fool yourself, you're just training to be a, a researcher and the topic is sort of like a means to an end, right? It's, uh, it's something to keep you motivated and hopefully you would have found something at the end of it. No, you're not gonna cure cancer. Um, you'll realize you don't really know a thing. You know, the more you know, the more you realize you don't know. There's a whole world and abyss of knowledge out there, but it's a good opportunity for you to know that you know, there is so much more to learn. And if it's something you enjoy, you know, there's a whole work, whole life you can dedicate to to, to learning that. So uh, that's reason number one. Number two, meeting some, you know, incredibly talented and smart people and, you know, um, and researching a whole world which you didn't even know existed. Um, I was lucky to be in a cohort of something like 100-ish people and they were doing such diverse and, uh, unique research which i didn't even know you know people did that and uh you know it was really interesting make some great friendships along the way and uh, it really helps all to build your network you know this com comes in handy later in life when you want to you know have an expert on something oh yeah uh, i went to did my phd with him you never know when this can come in handy i always say your network is your net worth um so you know uh, take uh, take that with a, a grain of a uh, a big bag of uh, of sand. All right. Another one. If you were like me and were already in the in the corporate world when doing your sort of you know when deciding to do your PhD, it's an opportunity for you to escape the rat race for you know somewhere between three and five years. You know, no boss, no clients. Yes, deadlines. Unfortunately, you still uh, do have your boss. I guess sort of becomes your supervisor, but obviously it's a very different relationship, right? You're not there to to do the typically worky sort of things, but uh, you know. It's an opportunity for you to change atmosphere for, for, for quite some time. Look, yes, you will be back on the poverty line uh, unless you're you know, fortunate enough that uh, that's not a concern for you. But look, you just revise your life expectations downwards um, and, and off you go. You just got to replace your Audi with Aldi and your Porsche for pot noodles. But uh, I swear you will be fine. You don't need the latest iPhone each year. Another thing sort of looking a little bit more forward, uh, looking forward is changing really the trajectory of your career and your career path, right? So this might not materialize right away. Um, I certainly think it helps open doors. It still has weight, um, but in you know, sort of 10 to 20 years, that change in trajectory really does materialize. I do believe that is true. Even if it doesn't really materialize, maybe the industry that you're in doesn't really appreciate PhDs, uh, at least when you are on an airplane and someone says, is there a doctor on board? You can put your hand up. We need to perform a tracheotomy. Can you do that? I can do trigonometry. Number five, you learn a unique set of skills. Um, I can't stress enough the difference between undergrad and PhD is an abyss. Yes, you might both go to the same university, but what you do in, during that time is completely different. No one is spoon feeding you anything. There's, there are no courses. Uh, you are literally researching. There are no textbooks about it, right? So you're at the forefront of, uh, of, of knowledge in that, in that respect. And you know, it gives you some great life skills, things like time management, um, you know, not giving up, when faced with a problem, 
uh, you know, sort of being independent, working by yourself, and also, you know, knowing when actually to park something. Not every piece of research that you come up with is, is useful or fruitful or can be accomplished in that limited time that you have. So you've got to sort of put your ego aside, put it in the bin and go, all right, let's actually tackle something that is actually achievable. Um, things like public speaking, I think you gain so much exposure to public speaking, whether, you know, um, whether you're doing things like, you know, a little informal uh, stand-ups, whether it be in your, in, your, in your cohort, in your department, or even things like I did a lot of sort of you know, tutoring and lecturing, and then you're thrown into a lecture hall with 400 freshers and the silence is deadening. They don't talk, they're more scared than you, if anything. So you've got to sort of learn to sort of break that silence and, you know, and, uh, and make the most out of it. And all of a sudden, you know, by the sort of third lecture, you sort of waltz in there, you're sort of confident, and that public speaking translate later on into, into life because you're always going to need that skill. It's an invaluable skill, uh, being placed in front of a camera. I love it, I love being in front of the camera, and I love public speaking, I love, you know, sort of, knowing something about a subject and hopefully someone wants to hear about it. Um, I really enjoyed that side of things. So um, doing the only way around it, no one really enjoyed it at the beginning. You just got to do it again and again and again and you overcome it and there you have it. So those are my top five reasons why I think you should be doing a PhD. No, it's not for everyone. Um, but you know, it was my life trajectory. It was my choice. Uh, I think it worked out really fine. I, if I have to, if I could build a time machine, I would go back and do it all over again. Uh, it was a great life experience. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Catch you in the next one. Bye.